stage four, um, and today was her first real big mountain test. And what I mean by that, it was the first time they had to go over long mountains, like they um, had to race over some smaller climbs already. But today they went over climbs that uh, last for 40 kilometers, uh, 23 kilometers, so really long stuff. And I think all the contenders showed up. Um, like every big favorite was there, like Pogacar was there, Vingard was there, Evenepoel was there, Ayuso was there, Almeida was there, Roglic was there, Rodriguez was there, so everyone really was on form today. Um, so yeah, what really happened then was everyone stick to, stuck together until the final kilometer or the final climb, in part because there was a lot of wind and nobody wanted to leave the draft, so Pogacar attacked um, on the final kilometer and um, he got everyone, um, including Vingard, but it was not as impressive people are making it sound because even though um, Vingard looked wasted on, on, at the top, he only lost about um, 8 to 10 seconds on, on Pogacar and he lost them not whilst climbing, but uh, from the acceleration. Like, I think the climbing speeds were about equal, but um, after a turn, uh, Pogacar is, is just the more explosive of the two, and he just, whenever there was a turn, the gap widened. So he didn't really widen the gap through uh, faster climbing speed, but through acceleration out of turns, I think. So I was not that impressed by it. Um, other than that, um, Enopool was really close at 14 seconds at the top of the final uh, at, at the summit. Um, Roglic and Rodriguez were a bit further behind at 40 seconds, I think. So they lost a bit of time. Um, so you can tell they were reaching their, their limits. But at the same time, um, I think they're showing improvement. Like I think they're going to be there during the third week. Um, I think. Roglic will grow into this tour, and so will Rodriguez. And I think they'll show a lot of form during the final week. So we're going to have a, a big, tough GC battle ahead of us. Um, of course, the race today didn't end at the summit, which I would have preferred, because I thought it looked a little bit sketchy, but I understand some people think descending is uh, a vital part of, of racing. And I suppose that's true. It's still, it looks sketchy as hell. Um, but Pogacar being a little bit, um, having a bit more weight to him and also taking more risks, took um, time on, on Vingegaard and the rest of his rivals um, on the descent. Like he took about 10 seconds on the summit and he widened that uh, to 35 seconds um, on the descent, so he, he descended about 25 seconds uh, faster than everyone else. Well, not than everyone else, then, because Rodriguez descended pretty fast, but he was further behind. Um, he descended 25 seconds faster than uh, Vingegaard, and I think a whole lot more faster than Enepool, because Enepool, um, after having crashed in crashed in descent, and after having seen someone die in descent, um, yeah, he didn't take any risk, so he went down a bit slower than the rest of the main contenders and had to crawl his way back to uh, the chasing uh, group um, as a result of that. Still, um, strong finish of Vanderpool today, finishing second after Pogacar, uh, finishing the bunch sprint. Um, so all in all, a very good day for Vanderpool as well. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. I, as an Evenepoel fan, I was really happy with what I saw. Um, Evenepoel was, I think, the third strongest, maybe even the second strongest today, because Fingar did look a bit wasted uh, at the summit. But, you know, at the end of the day, he couldn't follow Pogacar and Fingar, so... Yeah, I guess he was third strongest. Like, he was 14 seconds behind at the summit, so that's not bad at all. I think that's very good of him. Um, especially since he's more of a TT guy than a, than a climbing type. So I think it was a great performance from Evan Pool. I think he'll be happy, very happy with that. Um, he'll probably would have hoped that uh, the fin race finished at the summit and not uh, after the descent. <laughs> and like I said already, 
Um, I would have preferred that as well, because it really looked dangerous at times. Like they went 90 per hour and stuff like that. It was, yeah. And I know like it's an important part of racing, but still, if you put that in a final, as a final, you know some people are going to take risks and it's only one wrong turn and you got a big, big problem. Um, so I, I wouldn't mind that um, between mountains, but like as a final, I don't know about that, man. But you know, some people will love it and you know, it's everyone's opinion. My opinion is I would not want that as a final. Um, in any case, Enopool performance was very good. Um, I think he's going to look forward to the TT, um, hopefully getting some time back on Pogacar. Um, he's definitely there for podium for now. Um, but I think he's, he's gonna, he's, like people make it out that it's already uh, a done deal. Pogacar first, maybe Vingegaard battling him for uh, top spots. So first two are, are taken and then people are already claiming, well, Enopool's third best, but I don't quite see it that yet, that way yet, because Roglic is coming, and Rodriguez is coming as well, and Ayuso is hanging tough as well. Um, I think Ayuso was a bit selfish today, but okay. Uh, he, he was not a very good lieutenant of Pogacar, I felt today, but whatever. Um, it is what it is. In any case, it will still be a very tough uh, battle for podium finish, I think. But um, Enopo will be happy, and I think he might even look forward, like he might even think, you know, if it continues like it, why not try? You never know where you end up. Oh, well, next up uh, is stage seven. That's the next important uh, stage. Of course, you still need to stay upright uh, in stage five and six, like not crash, but uh, stage seven is the next really important GC battle. So uh, yeah, until then.